Hey, what's up everyone? Todd Castellan here. Going to do the third uh, high school fishing uh, preview, you know, for Toledo Bend. So what I'm going to do in this one is going to be different. And, and the reason I'm going to do Toledo Bend different is, is man, Toledo Bend's, Toledo Bend's really tough right now. Uh, it's a different lake. It's not even fishing like a normal lake. Um, and I want to explain that to y'all, uh, why I'm going to treat Toledo so much different than Rayburn. <clears throat> and it's not so much about how I'm going to fish. It's really how to find them there. <clears throat> What's cool about Rayburn is, is when you go out on Rayburn right now, you could probably go anywhere, um, close to the bank and shut down. And within probably, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred yards, catch a fish somewhere. I mean, it might be in two foot of water. It might be in 15 but there's literally a place to catch a fish somewhere that close, almost anywhere you stop on Rayburn. Toledo is nowhere like that. I mean, Toledo doesn't even come close to that. There are, there are places void of fishing on Toledo. And so that's really important. And so what I'm going to do is give you all little tips on like what to think about. Um, and then talk a little bit about how the lake's setting up. Uh, we'll kind of talk about the week prior, you know, coming up and what's all about to change. So if you haven't noticed, Toledo's been about five foot low. Um, and then that rain we got last last week, it's actually come up. So now it's it's a little less than three foot low, which is a big deal. So, I mean, that's two fo uh, more foot of water everywhere around the lake. Without grass, and since they've been spraying over there and killing all the, killing everything over there, I mean, that place is getting dirtier than usual. So, um, it's going to be really muddy in a lot of places. There's going to be some flow. And now we've got rain forecast for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We don't know how much yet, um, but that's something to take into account because that lake can come up a foot or two overnight uh, or in like two days if it, if it rains a bunch. So we, we're going to have to look, look to that and see what all it changes because if it comes up a foot or two, um, it could make it actually pretty good on the bank it can make that whole like where you're gonna you could win these tournaments and catch them on the bank uh if you've noticed the last couple tournaments out there um like the the costas and some of these they're catching a lot of fish way offshore really really deep suspended fish um but it's late it's getting to be late february we're still pretty warm i know it's gonna we're having some cold snaps in here but fish still want to go to the bank regardless of how cold it gets, the later in the year it gets. And I, I really believe, and, and y'all gotta think about these things, those fish look at time of day. So if, if you notice, when I say time of day is, is that they just know they're supposed to spawn, right? They know that at some point in time they're supposed to spawn and they use a couple of things to make that happen. To me, the biggest is water tip. However, they also know the days are getting longer. And that's what I mean by time of day. Every day, sometimes it gets a little bit, a minute longer here, a minute longer there. And, and about every two days, it gets a little bit longer. And those fish realize that, the, you know, they, they're just programmed to know this stuff. So they're going to follow and go to the bank um, as it starts hitting mid-February to late February. Um, I'm not saying they all go there, but a, a big push starts happening regardless of the water temp. Doesn't mean they're trying to spawn, but they will start showing up. You combine that with some warm snaps that we've been having and the fact that the water's coming up. So now you've got a couple factors all playing into them fish wanting to move shallow. Now, um, if some of y'all don't realize, most lakes, um, especially Rayburn, Toledo, most of our lakes uh, around Texas, um, they all, all the North end it is where it warms up the quickest. And if, if y'all don't know this, I'll explain this real quick. The sun sets in the East or sun rises in the East. When it rises in the East, the first banks on a lake to get warm or to get sunlight on them are the Northwest banks. So you got to look at a lake, you know, a, a long lake. And the north part of it, right, is going to get sun on it the first. And the northwest part of that lake and the northwest banks of that part of the lake are going to get sun on them 
the the quickest and the longest. And what that means is the more they get sun on them, the quicker they heat up. So it's almost like this in all lakes. And the reason that's important is, is those fish up north typically try to spawn earlier. So now you got fish on the north end wanting to go to the bank a lot quicker than the fish on the south end. Now, the bigger the creek, okay, so you got Housen and Six Mile and some of these really, really big creeks, they almost act like their own little lake. So sometimes even in those real, real big creeks, they'll still, you know, get up there pretty early as well on the northwest side. And the reason all that's important is that's where I would start. That's where I would check those places first. Another big deal is, is we're going to have a cold front come through. That north wind is going to push all the, all the water on the north end of the lake in a, in a creeks and in, in, in actually in the lakes further south. Well, they get all this north wind blowing on them, but those north banks are protected from trees and everything else. So they actually don't get as cold. So you have a lot of factors going in as to why fish and that these sections of the lake want to push up first. I bring all that up because the second thing I want to talk about is where to find these fish. Toledo Bend's huge, right? I mean, it's overwhelming for me at times and you cannot go out there um, in a day and figure it out. Usually it takes a couple days and some of y'all might not even get to practice. So what I try to figure out is this, and, and I'll let y'all in on a secret. It, we'll kind of divide the lake in halves, right? We'll take the Pendleton Bridge, okay? And we'll call everything above it the north end and everything above it the south end. And since Toledo is so bad, there, I mean, there's not a lot of fish in it like there used to be. The grass has died. Um, they've had a lot of flow and current over the past couple of years with these floods and it, it has made Toledo really tough. It is not fishing like the number one lake in the country. It's nowhere close. However, what happens is, is there has been grass over the last couple of years pop up in certain places. That's always going to hold more fish. Um, and right now, Six Mile and Housing have been the two places that have had grass. Um, it doesn't mean they have it now, but if they had it and only got last year or two, it puts a lot of the fish in those areas. So if it was me out there, that's where I would start. I would go to those places that had grass that are known for being really, really good areas of the lake. And I would start there, especially if you have no experience, especially if you um, didn't really find anything. What you're trying to do is put yourself around the most fish possible. Second, um, anything above the lake. Now, um, there's a whole nother section way, way, way up there. That's almost the river. Um, uh, that can be good. Uh, we're talking about a lot of mud and a lot of rain and a lot of water coming down the ri you know river if it rains like this. So I wouldn't take that chance. Um, but anything above the bridge from like 1215 to Lanan, um, those big creeks up there on the on the east side, those are good places to start as well. You're not going to have any grass there and the creeks aren't going to set up like housing and six mile but you're gonna have a lot of boat docks um, and you're gonna have a lot of places. And those fish have been, will, will still use those, those big creeks or the 1215 area. And that's, that's one way to look at it. Everywhere else in the lake, I'm not saying you can't catch fish there, but it, it gets very touchy as to where those fish might show up. Um, I, like I said, I'm gonna to try to put myself around the most fish that have been consistent over the last couple of years. And to be honest, those, those couple little areas of the lake have been the most consistent. So that's where I would start. Like, and, I, and guys, I mean, these are, these are stuff that, that we all look for when we go to these new lakes. I mean, I just always want to put myself around the most fish. So with that being said, um, a lot of it's going to have to depend on what goes on out there. Like, you know, with this rain and, and the wind, um, Friday, I think we're supposed to have a lot of wind. Saturday, we're not. So if you're going to get to practice, Saturday, you might be able to go anywhere you want to. But Friday, if you're going to try to go look for them, you might have to stay in a really protected areas. So keep that in mind. 
And it's Toledo Bend, guys. Uh, I can't say this enough. Toledo Bend is is far more dangerous than Rayburn. Um, it's bigger uh, in the lake slow. And with it being three foot low, this is the best. With a five foot low, stumps are shown everywhere, right? It's actually a little bit easier to see where you're supposed to go based on the amount of stumps everywhere. Um, as it starts creeping back up to level, it starts covering those stumps, guys. And, and at, at three foot, it's still showing a lot of them, but now it puts a lot of them right at water level. So uh, guys, really, really be careful out there. Um, if you don't know where you're going, if you're not in a boat lane, please idle. Um, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a bad lake. And, and like I said, it, and really watch the wind out there. A northeast wind um, is, is pretty bad out there because a lot, of, a lot of the fishing takes place on the Texas side. And so a northeast wind really hits that side of the lake. Um, so be careful. Like I said, guys, um, with that in mind, if you're going to fish shallow, um, there are going to be a couple different things you're going to have to be able to do. Um, with it still being low, there's not going to be a lot of bushes in the water. It's still going to have a lot of stumps. Uh, you're still going to be fishing stumps and little channel bends and things like that. Uh, the further north you go or the muddier it is, if you really go back into creeks, you're going to be able to throw spinner baits and chatter baits. And, and red eye shads and things like that and be able to cover that water um, you know especially the further back you, you are in a creek as you come out of those creeks it's harder to find that stuff on the bank with it being the level it is so you're gonna have to start changing to jigs and carolina rigs and things like that the deeper stuff and, and when i say deeper I, i'm calling kind of anything 10 to 15 foot and deeper um that's when you're going to start fishing a lot of channel bends and they're still going to be on channel bends and, and that still might be the easiest way to catch them it just might be the hardest way to find them um you know i know some guys were catching them in that 25 to 40 foot of water suspended out there um guys that's hey if y'all can figure it out all the power to you that's really really hard stuff and you have to have the right days you know you have to have the right weather days it can't be blowing real hard um but they were catching them on spoons out there doing that. Um, I think some guys are probably going to catch some on Alabama rigs and, and things like that. So it's something to take into. You, the, the great thing about this fishing deal is what we were trying to do is you're trying to <clears throat> look at what's going on, right? You're trying to put everything in your favor. So if, it's, if you know it's about to rain and you know it's about to flood on the lake and the water's coming up, it's typically going to make fish go shallow this time of year. And it's actually going to hurt sometimes a deeper bite. Not always, but that's that's the generality of it. So you want to focus on that. And I'm telling you guys, you really want to put yourself in, in, in places with the most fish. Um, I'll tell you the sleeper on Toledo are boat ducks this time of year. Um, boat ducks, especially with no grass in the lake. And that's a big key. If there is not grass in the lakes, they're going to have to use something. And they don't really use boat docks for to get out of the sun or anything else like that. They're just using them because they want to get something somewhere up shallow and, and, and be comfortable. And they need a boat dock is way better than just a, a, just a stump sitting out there. And so boat docks are sleepers. Um, Obviously, you know, spinner baits and chatter baits around them, but really this time of year, man, a jig, uh, a half ounce jig um, worked pretty slow through there. You might not get a lot of bites, guys, but you might get a lot of big ones. Um, it's it's a great way to win a tournament out there. And so I, I really wish I could tell y'all that they were going to be up there really eating shallow, like, and you could catch them on top waters and they'll be on beds. I still think we're a week or two away with this cold snap about to hit us. So, uh, like I said, really be careful, guys. I, I wanted to give a shout out too to, uh, you know, last uh, the last tournament y'all had. We had uh, Haley Hanna and Ethan Collins. Man, they had seventeen seventy eight. Uh, they won the event. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, it was a tough day, uh, and they're from Huntington. So shout out to them for, for doing good. And uh, I wish everyone luck out there this uh, week. And uh, uh, I hope you all catch them.